If you're editing a video with multiple camera angles, but the same audio, it shouldn't take you that long. And so if you have a project like a music video or a long lecture, or even a testimony or interview setup, I'm gonna show you how in Adobe Premiere Pro, you can use multi-cam to edit super fast and cut angles in real time. And be sure to stay around to the end of the video where I have a tip that will help your editing go even faster. So keep it locked, let's go. Hey, what's up? It's Omar Takori, your content creator coach. And on this channel, it's all about helping you get better photos and videos. And sometimes I do camera reviews, camera tips, but also times workflow tutorials just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So I've been editing video for right around 15 years and it's been a journey. Uh, however, I've always tried to find out how things could be done faster, smoother, quicker. And so uh, I used to do you know, videos with multiple camera angles and edit and select each angle one at a time. But I found a way that you can actually just edit in real time, almost like you're live switching. And uh, it's a super effective way that can help you edit super fast and get the projects turned around, whatever it is that you need. And so let's get into it. All right, so here we are on my desktop. As you can see, it's super clean. Hit that like button. If you like a clean desktop, very rare. I actually just dragged all my files into this desk folder. But anyway, uh, I just wanted to show you how I stay organized before I even start editing. And so, you know, all my files are in this folder right here. This is a worship song that we recorded. And, you know, may, may, if you're doing work for church, let me know in the comments. I love doing creative work for church. But anyway, we just shot this worship song in with five different angles. I used five Sonys. And I just wanted to show you that I how organized I like to stay. And so if you notice, I, I name the files what they are. So this is the tight angle. This is um, the A7 that was used on the right side, the A7 that was used on the left side, the slider angle, and then the strings. This is just recording the guitars. It was kind of just on the floor. But five different angles, I'm naming them separately. I'm not just dragging them in because it's just nice to be able to reference by looking at the file name. And then as you can see, I have my audio file, which is the mix uh, and the master version of the audio. So I got all scratch audio on all the cameras and simply that just means my audio on the camera itself is captured. So it actually has something to reference. Something to keep in mind is when you're filming, make sure that your audio is picking up and like you're picking up some sort of audio that you can reference. And so when you do sync it up with a clap or even just the ability to sync, obviously the program has the ability to reference uh, scratch audio. That's what scratch audio is. So we're going to open up Premiere Pro. I'm going to start a new project. This is just something I do. There's a million ways you could skin this cat, but I'm just going to uh, put my project file in that actual folder. I find that just helps me stay organized. Maybe it slows down a little bit, but that's all good. And so I'm going to call this no uh, longer slaves. I'll put a link to this video actually in the description on Instagram, we posted it to our church. But so here we go, we open up the project. So here we are in Premiere Pro. So the first thing I wanna do is obviously import all those files. And so you can click the bin twice, uh, and then I'm just gonna select the files. Now, once all your files are imported, as you can see, it's already all selected. If it's not, just select all your files that you wanna sync, right click, and then you're gonna select create multi-camera source sequence. Now, when the dialog pops up, the only thing I actually really change is this. Um, I like to change it to custom and then call it what it is because it, it'll just literally just do just that. No longer slaves. And then uh, I have audio track channel one selected automatic zero. You know, just copy this dialog. I don't really change much. If there's anything different that you see and you want to copy what I'm doing, do that. But I'm just going to hit OK. And with a push of a button, Adobe Premiere syncs up all your videos, all your audio, and creates a sequence. This is dope. Uh, now, as you can see, this uh, sequence is right here. Now, you're just going to right-click the sequence it made for you, uh, and then select Open in Timeline. And then, boom, there you have it. You can see all your uh, files are all synced up, ready to go. What you use this sequence for, this is not the sequence you're gonna edit and cut up. This is the sequence you're gonna use to color grade all your footage. Uh, if you have any edits to do to the audio, so if you're doing like an interview or something and you wanna like, I don't know, use a compressor, do some audio treatments, you're gonna do all that here. So you're not gonna do any cutting here. You're simply just going to, um, you know, uh, color grade your footage, edit your audio. You could even delete the scratch files if you want. Uh, I found that sometimes you'll, 
have uh, you know a track unmuted and then it's like what the heck where's that sound coming from so if there's anything you can do right now just you can delete your tracks uh, that you're not using and so I'm just gonna do that real quick so it's super clean and I would I would color grade this but I usually can do that at the end after I cut up the whole video itself so once you're at this place you're, the next step you're gonna do is you're gonna right click the sequence again and then you're gonna create and uh, select new sequence from clip. And now this is the this is the one that you're actually gonna uh, edit and, and mess with. So now before we move forward, I do need you to add a few buttons in your preview monitor. And so the way you do that is by hitting the plus button. But the two buttons you need to add uh, is uh, toggle multi-cam view. As you can see, it's a, a screen with multiple squares next to it or a, squ a rectangle or whatever you can call that. And then I think the other one that you can add is toggle proxies. So if you don't see these two now, just hit the plus button and then add them. You literally just click and drag like, like so. So just click and drag those uh, as needed and then we can move on. Got it, did it, cool, let's go. Uh, so the next thing you're gonna select is the toggle multi-camera view. So you can just click this right here and there you have it. It shows you all your angles in one time, I mean, at one time, which is super cool and uh, is super helpful. And so the next thing I'm gonna do is right click the screen and then I'm going to uh, select overlays. Now, I think it's really important that you do this, do this because you can see the numbers that it gives you. And these are the numbers on your numerical pad or even on your keyboard that you're gonna use to actually cut. And so based off of what angle you want to come up next or whatever, you just use the number to cut up. And so that's super cool. It kind of just makes it like a switcher, I guess you could say. Um, and so when you get to this point, you're kind of ready to go to just start uh, going. I just want to make sure you know a few things if you don't see it. Uh, just make sure that you're, if you're ready to do the cuts, that your track is selected. And I found that if it's not selected um, and you try to edit, it'll, it goes away. And you might be like, what the heck? I don't know what to do. Just make sure you select that first track and then it'll reappear as you can see. And so then the next thing you do is you literally just play through the video. You play through the video. I usually drop it down because I'm using 4K files. So I'll just drop this down to 1 16th and then uh, I'll play through it and make your cuts in real time. So here's an example. I'm just gonna play this real quick. Here's shot one and then I'm gonna cut the shot two and then uh, go to the slider, which is shot three. And then go back to the tight, which is one. And then when I stop, as you can see, it has made those cuts. Um, and so if you wanna play it back, And just like that, that's how you cut up. I'll, I would literally just sit here and just go through the entire song itself before I make any new micro adjustments. But uh, if you do mess up, maybe you do a cut you don't want it to be there, simply drag your cursor back to where you want it to start again. And then all the cuts you make after that, it'll just override. And so I don't like doing Command Z or undoing because if you sit through a, a two minutes of cutting and you hit Command Z, it'll wipe away that whole session. And so I like to think of it of a session, like I'm gonna session this first draft, cut them all up, and then I'll watch it back and then make any mic micro adjustments. But I'm always looking for the best shot, you know, in a situation like this. So, you know, if the song starts with the guy playing the piano, I'm gonna start with the piano shot and things like that, just to keep that in mind. Well, now I do have a tip that can make your process super quick. Uh, and I think would help most people who are using 4K files or even HD files, but you're maybe your computer or laptop's a little slow. But let me know if you're getting value in this video by smashing the like button if you haven't already. And question for you is what kind of projects are you usually doing? What requires multiple angles? A lot of times for me, if I'm doing Think Media videos, which is another channel I post content on, sometimes we do like top down angles and I'm doing something and we need to like cut as needed. I also do a lot of stuff for church, like our, you know, our sermon, we film it with multiple angles. And so I do find myself using this feature a ton, especially video podcasting, multiple angles, a 50 minute podcast. It would suck to actually spend each second selecting that footage rather than just 
hearing it through. And so just let me know in the comment section below what you usually are working on. But the tip I have for you to really speed up your workflow, especially if you're doing super long edits like 50 minute podcasts or something like that. And the tip is to proxy your video files. If you don't know what proxying your video files is or just what proxies are in general, it's simply t uh, telling the program to communicate to a lower quality version of a video so that you can edit faster. If you noticed, when I started editing and showing you the example of making those cuts, it was kind of lagging. And it's because I'm using just my MacBook Pro and 4K files, and so it's a lot on the computer. However, the way around that is to create proxies. And so simply, this is all you're gonna do, and you can do this process right when you import the videos into the uh, your project, or you can do it whenever. But this is how you actually uh, create and then enable your proxies. And so I'm gonna go back in, and here's my process clips. I'm only gonna select the video files, obviously you don't need to proxy audio files. So I'm gonna select, I'm gonna right click and then I'm gonna hit proxy, create proxies. Now uh, I like to use the lowest quality possible. So this is like a 540. So you think about 720, 1080, 4K, this is literally 540. And then what I'll do is I'll hit okay. What's gonna happen is it's gonna open up uh, Adobe Encoder and it's gonna proxy your footage. Uh, just wanna let you know that it takes time. This is something you can do overnight. So if you plan on editing a project, do this process overnight, and then when you get back to it, it's gonna be super ready to go. Now, when it is done, and you do have your proxies created, you can see when the proxies are done by going to the folder of the video, especially if you have this selected, uh, and you wanna make sure the destination is just selected next to original media. That's where your file is, so it would be on my desktop in that folder. However, once you have your pro proxies done, ready to go, you do want to enable it. So if you if you remember uh, when I had you add, add the uh, toggle proxy button on your preview monitor, and so that's this one right here. As you can see, it's kind of like a switcheroo. Call it a switcheroo ski, because that's what it's doing. It's switching the, the files from the 4K files or 1080 files or whatever files you're using with the bad quality ones, I guess you could say, or the 540p versions. And that way you can actually uh, edit super duper fast. And so that's my power tip. If you have questions about it, let me know in the comments section below. And I actually have a playlist on Think Media and we, we go through a ton of stuff in regards to Premiere Pro. So if you wanna check that out, uh, click or tap the screen. And I really appreciate you watching this video. Again, if you got value, smash the like button. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. I'm gonna try, try to drop more content. I know I've been ghosted for a little bit, but it's all good. Your boy's back now. I got a beard, I don't know if I'm gonna keep it. I got a kid now, I got a different life. My life's different from all the videos that I posted in the past. But anyway, it's uh, super cool. I hope this served you, and I can't wait to see you in another video. Peace. <laughs>